thank you so much, uh, Sheila and Ian. First is thank you so much for <laughs> talking about me and inviting me to this beautiful youth gathering. I was enjoying the story before this. <laughs> I just love that y'all are a youth group that are so passionate about God. There's, a, there's an energy among y'all, which is like you're actively seeking God and that's very rare to find. It's something that I myself struggled at a, at a younger age and I also wished for um, a gathering that I could enjoy this in. I was among gatherings that we say we believe in Jesus, but I don't know how far that belief goes. And that's kind of what I want to talk to you today about. This was a very basic thing of Christianity and it's the only thing that is needed. Um, one thing that Jesus asks is, believe me. Now, you may think that I, do, I know this. I know Jesus. I know who he is. I speak to him. I pray, I pray to him. Like, can we move on to something more in, in depth? But I want to um, take your attention to a very interesting passage which is in John chapter six. If you have your Bibles, you can look at it. And the passage comes right after Jesus feeds the 5,000. So um, in, this, in this chapter, Jesus feeds the 5,000 with bread. And we know this story, it's a wonderful story. There were only five loaves and two fish and he breaks them and he keeps breaking them and he keeps breaking them. And it goes into this huge crowd, which is estimated to be many more people than 5,000 because the 5,000 are only the men. We know that um, the men in the family are often occupied by the women and the children. So he does this amazing miracle. Okay. And, um, let me see what the, the verses are. Verse 25 onwards, you will find that the people are searching for Jesus. Obviously, he gave bread, he multiplied it. This was not a rich country. This was not, uh, you know, flowing in milk and honey. They were struggling to pay their taxes. They were struggling to have a decent life. And they have found a Messiah who can multiply bread. Problem solved, you know? So obviously they would want to find this man and see what else he can do. So verse 25 says, they found him on the other side of the lake and asked, Rabbi, when did you come here? And Jesus answers a very savage, in a very savage way. He says, Truly, I tell you, you are looking for me not because you saw the signs that I did, but because you ate the bread and you had your fill. Don't work for food that spoils, but for food that lasts into eternal life, which the Son of Man will give you. For on him, God the Father has placed his seal of approval. Okay, keep this verse in your mind. And I want to um, take this to a, a relevant way. Say your friend is there and you see a potential in this friend. You see maybe they, they have a talent that they're not really, it's not really come to fulfillment. Okay, maybe they draw well. And they draw exceptionally well. And you believe in them as in you believe that in some point in the future something great can happen with your friend if they were to pursue this you believe so much in this that you encourage them uh, whenever possible whenever you have the opportunity you encourage them to keep drawing or to to go to an exhibition you 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 do whatever it takes because you believe in that person when you believe in a person, you're not only believing in the current state of things, you're also believing into a future. You're believing in the potential 
of your friend or whoever that is, someone you love, your family member or your church mate, whoever it is, you believe that this is going somewhere. And what Jesus was hoping to find among the people was that they will look at him multiplying this bread and they will believe not that he is an awesome food maker. They will believe that he is the son of God. But instead he finds that they just, they just want their tummies to be filled again. All right. So um, an advantage we have is when we believe in Jesus, we already know what happened in the end of his life. We know he died for us. He rose again. So when we, we, we say, let's believe in Jesus, we're believing in an awesome thing that's already happened. But what did these people have to believe in? Jesus tried to keep showing them not that he can multiply bread only. He was showing them that in him is the secret of life itself. And as the passage goes on, it's really beautiful how he uses this uh, picture of bread. And he says, stop worrying about this bread, but go after bread that never dies. You have this bread today. Tomorrow it's, it's either eaten or it can spoil. Go after a bread that never dies that never perishes. And he offers you and I that same bread. Now, these people didn't know as much as we know now that this was the Messiah they were talking to. They got very confused. They started getting offended because Jesus started saying things like, eat me, eat of me. I am the bread of life. If you eat of me, you will never die. He started saying things like that. And the people listening started saying, are you mad? How are we supposed to eat this man's flesh? They were not able to realize what he's actually saying. The disciples later on came to him and said, what, what were you talking about? And Jesus says, I'm talking about the spirit of God that gives life. And I want you to partake of that life. Okay, so as we're talking about this, I want you and I to question, do we eat of this life on a daily basis? Are we filled with eternal life? Jesus did not offer us a life that starts only after we die on this earth. Yes, we're going to have a whole new body and, you know, it's going to be totally different. But the eternal life he's talking about, it starts now. It starts here. We have to believe right now in Jesus. And that has to show up in eternity now too. What do I mean by this? Do we worry about food? Honestly, ask yourself. Yes, I worry about food sometimes. What am I going to have? What am I going to eat? Matthew chapter 6, Jesus said, don't, don't worry about those things. That's something unbelievers worry about. When you don't believe in God, anything is possible. There can be a famine suddenly. There can be a drought suddenly. Um, we've seen COVID happen. It was something so crazy that none of us could have imagined it happened. Beautiful thing among the believers is even in spite of COVID or maybe even because of COVID, people came to God much closer than ever before. I don't know if you all experienced this, but <laughs> I see some nodding happening. <laughs> We were, we were forced to come closer to God because like, oh, God is the one who never perishes. All the things of God never die. Everything around us is dying. Everyone we know and love 
is at risk is it a danger is dying uh, schools are closing colleges are closing hospitals are difficult to get into everything has changed but god has not changed so even in this horrible time we have you know come closer to this god so i want us to be very honest i know all of us are pretty young here and you may not be thinking such deep things all the time and that's fine but it is there's no like you're never too young to do this i think that it's very important for a young woman a young girl a young boy a young teen someone in their 20s uh someone even in their 30s or whatever your age is it's very important that we know who we are what is our purpose why are we on this earth all those questions otherwise we will just do whatever we want to the life and it will go nowhere only if we know who we are where we're going why have we been put on this earth you will use your time and whatever god has given you in a valuable way the answer to all of these questions is jesus christ and not only is he the answer but he wants us to know this these people were like little bit dumb <laughs> and sometimes we are also a little bit like that god will be showing us miracles and we'll still be worrying about small things like what do we eat next where do we go when can i meet my friend what should i wear my clothes are over like we'll be worrying about these small small details when god has done awesome things in our lives you know so jesus didn't leave these people at that nor is he going to leave you and i at a worrying stage he wants us to have life now let me tell you something really awesome you and i know that jesus is the way the truth and the life from him life comes we all live but we live by him the book of john says that by jesus everything was made jesus is the very manifestation of god he's like the representation of everything that god is and he is the life we kind of know this but do we realize that jesus says i want you to eat that life what happens when um uh, let's think of this let's kind of break this down jesus multiplied the bread it wasn't that his hands were magician hands it was not a magic trick that he did it was that the spirit of life lived in him and by that life bread itself multiplied into what it was not it was just five pieces of bread and it became tens and tens of thousands of thousands of people of pieces it was the spirit of life that did this now if jesus is asking us to eat of that life itself what do you think it means for us it means that we will be eating that same power the same authority the same ability that broke the bread now we have to be we have to be careful here god is not saying i am going to give you the ability to become god no this is an authority only because of jesus you have to get that straight and um realize that he is giving us life not only to have life but even why does he say i am going to give you the authority to do greater things than i have done 
the bible like some of the very greatest miracles all jesus did he walked on the water he broke the bread all the coolest miracles jesus did think of your favorite jesus miracles stuff that no one else did he brought lazarus out of the grave he was really really awesome and he's saying you can do greater things than this through me through my name through this spirit of life that i'm asking you to take in what does it mean to eat it means that you take it inside yourself it means that you break it down it means that you digest it into your system and that food will not just go down like this it'll go into all of our body it'll go into our mind it'll go into our eyes it goes everywhere can we allow our belief in jesus to go into everything that we are what i mean by this is um some of us believe in jesus but we are scared to talk about, to our friends about it or we believe in jesus but um we have certain addictions that nobody knows about we believe in jesus but there are some areas that we don't want him to interfere in our lives you know god i'm going to pray and i'm going to talk to you in the morning the rest of my day is mine i'll do what i want to do how i'm feeling like i will do that you may not say those words but unless we are partnering with jesus the whole day which is difficult but unless we are doing that there are areas of our life that we're keeping away from jesus and we think that we are living um let me try and explain this especially at a younger age i know i look like your age only but i'm little bit <laughs> little bit more <laughs> especially at a, at a young age i was so afraid to let god rule my entire life I said look I'm already spending quiet time with you I'm already going to church like what more do you want and I was little bit afraid to allow him to tell me what to do in the rest of the day like in the afternoon in the evening in my relationships um with my family I was little bit scared because what I felt is I'm losing like my control over my life there were things i wanted to watch that i didn't want god to tell me no don't watch that watch this i didn't like that i wanted to be in charge and um it took me some years it took me a long time to realize this verse if you try to hold on to your life you will lose it and if you lose your life for my sake you actually find it you find it so if at all you are ever scared when god asks you to do something maybe he says um i want you to speak for me i want you to sing for me i want you to play music for me and you're scared because you want you want to be cool you want to be able to do things that others are doing you want to do what your friends are doing i'm encouraging you when you lose what you think is your life you're going to find it and this is what believing in jesus does you know he'll take us into really weird places sometimes when he asked when he said peter can walk on the water it was unnatural <laughs> would any of us done that i don't know i think we would have been really scared peter was bold to say lord ask me to come on the water but would we have done that jesus takes us into places that are different and a lot of us love different but a lot of us find it hard to be different everyone who is different has to struggle a little bit with the rest of society even if you're different in a cool way um for instance i used to get little bit 
better marks in not in my whole school life in my primary school life and i liked that but then i noticed that it was not cool <laughs> you you get called a nerd you get called um like people don't relate to you and th- those kind of things it happened even with singing i loved singing but when i realized that some people you know they would get they would look down on you somehow actually they are trying to pull you down to feel better about themselves but it's hard to be different and i think i let this get to me so much that i tried to be so much like everyone else that i started failing in my exams and i even lost for some time i lost the ability to sing uh, my whole school most of my school life nobody in my class knew i could sing no one no one could see that i was doing well in studies because i was not actually i was just trying to fit in and i almost lost myself doing that um god god has definitely gifted each and every one of you with something beautiful something cool something good that you may be afraid to use because it involves you being different and different means if the water is coming this way you have to go this way so there may be some pressure there's peer pressure there's society pressure um finally when i decided to do music after college i left potential careers that i could have had and i dove into music oh my goodness i did not know it will be so hard who gave me a tough time more than anything it was society what are you doing actually they'll ask and if i say music what all looks they will give my goodness and i thought it's okay let them think what they want but after one year passed two year passed it became so annoying it became so hard i started not wanting to go anywhere i didn't want to talk to anybody because they'll all ask this question what are you doing what are you actually accomplishing where is your life headed ma so sad for you you studied so well now what you're wasting everything you're wasting your parents money you're wasting opportunities first you work then you do all this nonsense natak it was hard and it was just hard because i'm going against the current this is much more for believers <laughs> when you believe in jesus he asks you to do totally random things sometimes totally different things sometimes what love your enemies like who does that jesus does that when someone slaps you turn the other cheek what nonsense but jesus did that he'll ask us to do opposite things than what the world teaches us it's tempting to be like the world but we are asked very clearly you have to be in this world but you should not be of the world you have to be different and i know it's difficult but thankfully you have this whole youth group <laughs> who is with you you can do this together a huge blessing god has given us is we are not only one one people on the earth he has given us the ability to have youth meetings to have church and use this time and these gatherings to to grow together in this and find good company in this so the bottom line of everything that um i wanted to put across to you is whenever something really bad happens in your life maybe you lost a friend you lost a family member maybe you faced abuse uh, maybe the day is just going terrible and there's nothing you can do to fix it ask yourself do i believe in jesus picture jesus opening his arms out to you saying believe me what happens when we put our mind on that is we realize that this world is temporary it's going to go jesus is calling us to eternal life 
he's calling us to a life that's not going to end on this earth so then what can harm us if death itself cannot harm us what do we have to fear we get angry and we get upset and we get sad because things come to threaten our well being they threaten our happiness they threaten our safety but when we re- just remember this always this phrase believe me that is jesus is saying this remember jesus asking us to believe him and just believe him when you believe jesus you're believing in the god of love in the god of life in the god of justice in the god of forgiveness the god of mercy and this simple mindset will change us completely whatever you're going through you don't have to um you know immediately kneel down on the floor and pray a long prayer whatever you're going through you can just remember jesus and remember and really ask yourself do i actually believe him right now because if we believed him we wouldn't be losing our head for no reason we wouldn't be simply disobeying our parents or our teachers we won't be acting very stupid and immature we'll hold ourselves with value with dignity we'll treat others with respect we will love our enemies we will pray for people who hurt us let our belief change who we are faith without doing something is dead and doing something without faith does not make any sense both we have to do and let's start with belief have faith the whole thing about faith is it's not visible so don't wait for god to give you a vision for you to believe something don't wait for him to give you a gps map of how your life is going to go he's not going to tell you in 5 years you will become this and after 10 years you will do this and in 50 years 15 years you will this is the plan he's not going to tell you that you know one thing i realized um, i always ask god for the plan i want to know the details you know if you tell me then i'll be able to prepare properly and then we can do it and he never gives the plan <laughs> he sometimes gives hints he may give a glimpse he may give a little prophecy but it's not detailed he doesn't give the timeline and that frustrates me so badly but what i realized is if he gave me the map i will believe in the map only and then and then i'm not actually believing god jesus is saying don't follow what you think is the map follow me we all fight for control but i think we should just enjoy following jesus today he may take, take us this way tomorrow he may take us this way day after he may take us that way let's just relax hold his hand and let us lead and let him lead us forward so we are just believing in him and he is showing everything step by step actually this is a beautiful thing that god has done for us where we don't have to know what's going to happen we just have to believe in the god who knows everything we trust that he loves us so he's not going to lead us into a pit or a you know trap or something satan will say careful god is leading you in a wrong way don't believe in him but satan is the god of lies um he's not a god at all i mean to say he's he's a father of lies he's the source of all evil god is the god of everything good and awesome so just believe in him and just follow him 
uh, it says the Holy Spirit has been gifted to us that he can lead us. So if you're worried, how should I do? What should I do? You don't have to worry. You just ask God, tell me what to do. If you're not able to hear his voice, spend time listening to his voice notes that are in the Bible. It's all there. And you'll recognize his voice more and more. Okay. So, yes, that's what I wanted to share. I'm done. <laughs> uh, thank you, Behan. Thank you for sharing the word of God with us. Uh, guys, do you have any questions to ask Behan right now? It's the time for you guys to open up and ask her any questions. I have also opened up the chat. Uh, you can also chat with Vihan and uh, be an anonymous person and you can ask her questions. So the platform is over to you guys to ask questions. Bring them in. Uh, hi. Uh, so this is not about uh, today's message. Actually, uh, I've been watching a few videos of yours uh, on YouTube, and I came to know that uh, you had taken a fast of 40 days just to know what God wanted you to do in your life. So um, could you give us like a brief uh, summary of your experience throughout that period? Like, how did you not give up? How did you last those 40 days? Because last time I've heard a person Taking a 40 day fast was Jesus. So, <laughs> so yeah. Thank you for your question, Agnes. Yeah, okay. Um, I, well, first of all, I didn't do it exactly the way Jesus did it. So it was a little bit <laughs> humanly <laughs> easier, maybe. The bottom line of why I wanted to do it is I wasn't sure if I believed um, and that scared me. Like I, I think I, at that time I thought I did believe, but it was not changing me as a person. You know, when I read the Bible, I did not relate to anything the apostles were writing. You know, St. Paul, he writes with so much, um, so much, so much fire. And I felt like I didn't have any of that. So, and when my classmates would talk about, uh, you know, they would talk about other religions and I would get so confused. So the reason I did this was I want to find out if God is actually real and do I actually believe him or not. And I must say, um, God put this 40 day fasting on my heart. Like he wanted me to do it. He called me into it and he gave me signs that um, he wanted it to be for 40 days. He led me to those verses where Jesus did it, Moses did it. Um, and the number kept popping up in different places in the Bible. So if not for God specifically calling for that, I would never have had the faith to do something like that. Also, I'm, I, I sometimes get practical with God. So I asked him, like, how exactly you want me to do this? Am I not eating at all? Or what is it? And so he... We, like we worked out a little bit of a plan <laughs> I do make a lot of plans with God as much as I can um, so I for me what my faith could extend to was I would have a small breakfast every day and the rest of the day I would not eat anything that was the thing I figured out like that's something I can think okay we can do this and I was not too be on my phone at all so there was no phone during this time um, I tried as much as possible to cut out any interactions with anybody but of course I'm living in a family so I could not cut fully but just to my ability I just messaged my friends thankfully only few friends I had so no big deal um, I said I'm not available for the next 40 days it was also summer vacation time so I was not like working or nothing like happening at that time those things helped the experience initially was horrible even though I ate a little bit I never dieted or anything like that I'd never ever skipped a meal like you know our Indian families 
<laughs> you can't skip meals easily. So I'd never tried anything like that, and I'm I, I was already skinny, and I felt like my body was going crazy without lunch and dinner, which is our main meal. So initially it was horrible, and on the seventh day, I planned to tell God I'm giving up. I planned to tell him. I'm so sorry and I was so upset with myself. Um man this is getting to be a long explanation. <laughs> it it was a big thing that happened. I think some of you have seen my video on it but I'm trying to sum it up. The seventh day I went to him saying I can't do this. And he made me look at my guitar. So I thought okay maybe you asked me to write a song and you know an awesome thing with feelings is you can channel them into something creative so i started writing and god is so cheeky okay through the song he spoke to me i thought i am going to write a song about how frustrated i am with god but it ended up being a ministering like god started counseling me only through that song and what he told me is this and this is what got me through the rest of the 33 days he said you think you're going to be able to do this on your own no that's not how i made you you are going to keep falling i am going to always be there to catch you somehow i understood I understood that this meant I don't have to be a Christian on my own. I don't have to obey God on my own. I don't have to have faith also on my own. I just need to partner with God. This is a relationship. This is a partnership. This is a kind of it's kind of a spiritual marriage that's happening. You can't be married on your own. You have to be with somebody. Um and so he revealed this to me and that's how I was able to do the rest of the time I enjoyed the rest of the time it was such a beautiful time I didn't want it to get over <laughs> and I was able to hear God as able to speak with him as able to ask him all my um questions and he gave some answers and yeah to sum it up <laughs> uh there's one more question and this is what they have asked hi we go to sleep with determination that we should pray to god meditate on this word but the next day something blocks us from doing it we were told that we should pray about it but still this worldly thing stops us from getting close to god so how can we overcome that thank you for asking that it's an honest question hmm jesus said be of good cheer means be glad be happy because i have overcome the world and it says that jesus is not a um he's not a what is the modern word for mediator i don't know like you have uh, sometimes you have a mutual friend who makes things better for you on both ends who talks on your behalf jesus is that kind of a person it says that we don't have an unsympathetic person in jesus he knows our struggles he was tempted how we are tempted he he's been through the temptations he's had the temptation of of everything of procrastination of laziness of uh, of even lust of any kind of evil of um of drunkenness every temptation he has faced and he overcame and he says you can take part of the same being that i am so we are not to overcome this on our own okay we are made in flesh totally from adam and eve time we are wrecked by sin our heart is full of evil if we try to do this if we try to read our bible by ourselves if we try to pray by ourselves we will always fail how can we overcome is we have to rely on god's strength 
And how do you rely on God's strength? It again, it boils down to, do we really believe he has the power to help us do this? And if we really believe, okay, when you really believe in something, you will do stuff. If you believe you're a guitarist, you'll go and play the guitar. If you don't know how to play it, you'll learn it. Like belief leads to stuff. Yeah, that's my answer. We have one more question over here. Let me read it. It's, it's a bit huge to read it out. Hi, Akha. My question is that usually after reading the Bible or hearing a sermon, one feels super determined and feels they can trust God fully. But when the problem or a difficult thought comes by, trusting God or relying on God seems impractical, as the problem seems super practical and scary. So how can we confront it that moment? Mm -hmm. I understand the question. Um, <laughs> let me tell you a little story. There was one time I had such a beautiful night. I was reading the Bible and I was filled with the knowledge of God. God's presence was so thick. I said, tomorrow I'm going to tell five people about you. And at this time I was super shy and I'd never spoken much to people. But I, because that moment was so awesome, I was sure that when tomorrow came, um, I'll be able to do it. But when tomorrow came, the feelings were gone. The presence of God, I did not feel the way I felt the previous night. My motivation was gone. My, my drive, everything was gone. And I found myself completely failing at my plan. Utter, utter fail it was. I didn't speak to one single person about God. How can we overcome uh, from doing this. You know, instead of thinking of all the big things in life that we have to do, I challenge all of us to start obeying God in the small things. In how you talk to your family, in how you talk to your friends, um, start obeying God in the tiniest of things. And obedience works out salvation in us. You know, we can believe, we can believe, but if you're not obeying God, you're not tasting God. By obeying, you actually taste the goodness and the awesomeness of God. Uh, what I told you about my fasting journey, yes, I, I started hearing God, but it was through a lot of obedience as well. Faith is the main thing but it was by reading the word of God that I began to hear him. And not only that, only when I started obeying what was written, I understood why it's an awesome book. Otherwise, you can read the Bible and think, this is the strangest, most confusing book that I've ever read. Until you start obeying it, only then you'll realize, wow, there's so much wisdom. You have to experience it by doing it. And if you're having trouble um, doing like, oh, the question was about quiet time. If you're have a, having trouble doing that, um, one is to ask God, how, how do I overcome this? He, he may tell you a plan which you may not have thought of because he knows each of us individually. He may say, why don't you pray right now? Why don't you pray after school? Why don't you start reading? At this particular time, he may give you a solution like that. Or he may tell you something like, don't watch that video before you go to sleep. Or don't listen to that song in the night. He told me things like that. You're watching this particular serial and it's affecting my relationship with you. You're listening to this set of songs and I'm not able to speak to you because of that. Whatever he tells you, you have to go ahead and do it. Um, it says, seek and you shall find. So if you, if you search for the answer to this question, he may tell you something very specific. And uh, another practical tip I can give is, please get good sleep. Because 
if you don't get good sleep it's very difficult to read a bible as soon as you get up <laughs> there's one more question we had and the question is how to identify the voice we hear is from god or is it our own voice mm beautiful question so many struggle with this definitely i've been confused even every now and then what i notice is my voice is full of selfishness it's full of um you know how how can i get better or how can i have my way and it's full of evil it's full of ambition it's full of pride it's full of ego it's full of me 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 but god's voice is full of peace it's full of love it's full of forgiveness mercy grace these are characteristics of god that make up his voice so if you have a thought in your head that is godly it's probably from god because we don't get those thoughts easily uh, when peter told jesus you are the messiah jesus told him this thought was given to you by god himself our thoughts are filled with evil stuff not necessarily um murderous stuff but anything that's not the holiness of god is evil so that's that's kind of how you one way you can distinguish the voice of god also please read the bible because that is his word that's his word when you read the bible you'll understand oh these are the kind of things he says so if he if you get an opposite sounding thought in your head you can know okay this is not from god but if you get something that's similar to verses you've read you can know okay this is from god we have another question over here hi akka is having temptation a sin no no uh, first corinthians 10:13 says when you are tempted means you will be tempted it's not the temptation that makes us sinners it's how we react if we give in to the temptation there'll always be people in our life or in the world who will um try to attract us towards doing something bad small things big things that's not the sin the sin is if we say yes to that because if we say yes to that then we are saying no to god there's no two ways about it either we are saying yes to god or we're saying no to god at the same time either we're saying yes to the world or no to the world so if you want like a way that you can make both god and people happy you're going to have a very tough impossible time it's not going to happen um so it's not a sin in itself but um first corinthians 10 13 says when you are tempted god is faithful and you don't have to say that you are facing any temptation that is special only to you everyone has faced the temptations you have faced especially jesus so god is faithful and he is going to show you a way out how i've used this verse in my life is um, when i'm tempted i'm not automatically thinking of god i have to consciously remember i believe in god god can you please get me out of this and he'll tell me something like think of uh, think of my son jesus or or if i'm not in a place to think of him he'll just divert my mind to something else like anything else but the sin for instance once i was thinking of something really horrible and i knew i i don't want to continue in this so i asked god please help me i don't want to do this and he uh, made me think of a music scene <laughs> like it was not it was not like super like heaven gates or anything but it was something to get me out of that bad place so yeah god's going to show you a way out you have to ask him uh 
Okay, uh, one more question. Uh, looking at the way you talk, um, we can see that you have a very personal relationship with Christ. Like when you see you make plans with God and things like that. So how did you get into that relationship? Because once upon a time, you said when you were in school, you were um, you were with, you were trying to please your friends and things like that. And how did this change came over in your life? Well, thank you. And man, these questions they can take a long time to answer. Um, I'll do my best. Huh. Yes. At one point, I was, it's so sad because I, I'm blessed with good parents who showed me the right way, but still in spite of all that, in spite of knowing God was real and all of that, I still managed to be utterly rebellious in my, maybe like from six to 17-ish. And I just, if someone said do something, I want to do the opposite thing. It's still there, obviously. And I'm glad St. Paul said he also experienced that. What I don't want to do, sorry, what I want to do, I don't do. This rebellion. Um, how did it change? God has gifted me with this. I may not be a lot of things, but one thing he has gifted me with is I want to I want to mean something, you know, I want life, I want what I'm doing to mean something. I can't bear talking without that talk going nowhere, you know, like just simply talking. I can't bear that. I can't bear do something without it meaning anything. So even though I had my own plans, I wanted to become a rock star, secular, obviously. I wanted to do all kinds of things. I wanted to be awesome. I wanted to, I wanted to be cool. Though I had all those plans, there, there were some previous encounters that I had with God, very short ones, where I knew that he was real. It got a little bit um, buried inside. It got a bit dusty. The memories got dusty, but it was kind of bothering me. So um, the, the 40 days, past period that I talk about that was very crucial to me because that was the time I said I've had enough of this back and forth you know one moment I want to do what I want and the next moment I'm feeling guilty and I wanted to just either be a proper full-on believer or be full-on against I didn't want the back and forth stuff and I used the word I too much God was leading me in this. If we look carefully in our life, um, God is leading us all. Even the feelings of guilt, even the feelings of something's wrong, even that is from God. So all I did was, after a point, I had to look at it. And I did spend a lot of time alone. I didn't have many friends. I wasn't doing too many things. I was not at all noticed by people i could leave the class and come out without anyone knowing i was there like if the teacher asked did vihan was she present today no one would have known that kind of person um but i was fed up and i think the only thing that i did was i searched for god it says if you search you will find I would encourage anyone who's a little bit confused, just search. Either you'll find what is true or you'll find it's not true. But you have to know in your own heart, you have to know for your own self what is the truth. So all I did is search. And he found me. And I found him. Once I found him, um, it was a little bit easier from there because now I was sure 100% that God is real and then if he's real, then I better live <laughs> according to his will because I don't want to be going to him at the end and he says, I don't know who you are. You didn't listen to me. I don't want that situation. God promises an awesome life, not only now, but in the future. 
so i've just i've just done um my best to stay close to him and he has done all the work of putting his heart in me his mind in me of leading me in a particular way he has changed my nature so so drastically he has made me much more loving much more caring those were emotions i didn't have um still a long way to go but a lot of progress has been made so again it just everything boils down to believing if there's a doubt please find an answer he will do all the work Uh, thank you, Rehan. Uh, guys, is there any more questions to ask? We can take one or two questions. Uh, Rehan, are you getting any personal questions in your chat? I did get one. Let me check it again. I, th I think mm. it was sent by me, right? Yes, one is by you. Okay. And I have another one too. What are some signs that we know when a plan for your life is from God? Hmm. It's an important one. Um I had the privilege of looking at my mom through this because she also wants to live her life by God and she would tell me things like for her personally now everyone need to do this but for her personally she likes god to confirm things for her so if she feels god is speaking to her through one verse then she'll ask god to confirm that maybe with another verse that's similar or maybe someone tells her the same thing or you know in whatever way she's open to whatever way god chooses she looks for confirmation i guess i also do that in a in a different way um I talk to God but sometimes he will out of the blue put something on my heart and that needs to match what I already know about God it needs to match his nature okay so obviously God will not tell us to bomb a building we know that it does not match his nature <laughs> but if it does match his nature if it matches what he tells his people normally when he said um for me he said like you need to speak for me i know this is from god because it's definitely not something i wanted to do that's one sign <laughs> another sign is he tells prophets like jeremiah he told moses he told uh, there are women prophets too in the bible deborah um esther he expects people who love him and know him to speak for him that's a repeated thing that happens over history so you have that confirmation um and god confirmed it in different ways for me um he led me to youtube which is uh, <laughs> i speak a lot on youtube after doing that he put on my heart i wanted to speak for me on a ministry level which blew my mind i was like can girls do that it's like i'm asking who are you questioning so these are some ways it has to match the word of god um it has to match his nature which is a similar thing it it you can ask him for confirmation if you have a doubt it has to match also things that he has put in you already so say um mm, you are horrible at math and you get this sentence be a math professor like it's 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 not doable okay when god told me to speak i didn't know i could speak i didn't know he had put it in me but in the coming years he showed me that i could speak and then he kept come confirming that so sometimes he'll tell you things that um uh, for instance i read this book the purpose driven life and that author says one very practical way is god has given you gifts and talents 
you know you can look at that and see how you can glorify god with that a gift a talent is given for you to glorify god that is his will and then you have the general will of god which is go and preach the gospel that's for everybody okay so that's that's his will these are some wills that can help shape um an idea of where god wants you to go in life um go and preach the gospel doesn't mean you have to be a a pastor maybe it is ask god about that but it may be in your school in your college he wants you to stand out for him to shine for him it may be in your building in your family in whatever way but this is a will that he wants us to witness for him so that's the general will and if you want a more specific will you can look at what god has gifted you with what uh, others also have recognized in you like you may think you're an awesome singer but people may tell you like oh can you not do that please look at also what people are telling that's also like a confirmation that you are good at something and put the two together <laughs> and ask god hey can i go ahead with this or better still ask him only god if you have a plan for me can you make it known to me and stay close to him he will reveal to you at some point or the other 